Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be talking about my car 15. But before we get into that, sponsor of the channel is literally me and nobody else. I paid for every last bit of this. Everything came out of my pocket and I did my own research and built a budget car 15. Very, very budget. Car 15 stands for Carbine Armalite Rifle 15, Model 15, you know. Uh, Eugene Stoner designed the AR-15 in 1957, which later gave birth to the M16, which then gave birth to the Car-15. They wanted something much shorter and lighter that they could maneuver better with. By the way, we do have like a little training mag here. It's a prop mag. We don't ever use it. So we painted it white to identify that this one is no go. You don't ever put bullets in this one. So weapon is clear. So whenever I set out to do this, I was on a very strict budget and, uh, wanted to build a car 15 i seen uh, admin results he uh him and grand thumb did a retro rifle uh video and i was sitting at work one day watching it and i was like you know what i want one so i came up with essentially this right here i'll, I'll walk you through all the parts and everything of the price tags on everything so you have an idea of what you could do you could get this for like ballpark figure right keep in mind this was months ago that i did do this so prices are probably different now um we'll start here at the front uh it's just a three prong uh, it was like 16 dollars. it was cheap as hell right but it works and i love it it's, it's very good quality i like it a lot so moving back from there obviously you've got your fr uh, fixed front iron here on your gas block that comes standard with the upper now the upper is palmetto state armory which i understand psa it's cheaper right they are trying to arm american citizens for a decent price with decent gear now of course it did come with this handguard here which as you can see is much fatter so i took that off and put on the brownells uh slim profile handguard so a lot of people don't know this but these uh handguards right here with these holes are actually m-lock right so i've got two rails here two picatinny rail sections m-lock rails put on here to hold my sling mount and this enforce light that i put on virtually everything moving back from there of course we got the steel mag that i don't know the company c products defense i heard they make good mags why does this one suck oh. ass oh that's one of their uh that's not their enhanced stainless steel one. Oh, this is just that's just their this is the it? poor people one yeah that's so it's, it's it's our mag okay yeah that's why we have it then okay cool so right now i've got a soda arms lower complete lower on here it's not normally the lower i use i normally use my psa lower but I slapped this one on here because I like the grip that's on it. And I did not feel like I have to take this out and then watch for the retaining spring and everything. And just change lowers, right? Moment. Right here we have a uh, SB Tactical A3 brace. Love this brace, favorite brace. Uh, by the way, do this to it right here. It's still a brace, not illegal. And it's better for um, stabilizing. The Strike Fire by Vortex is actually a fairly good optic. Uh, got the box for it right here. I can show you in a minute what all comes with it, but that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this carry handle. Now, you may have noticed in the clip before, or even right now, there are zip ties on here. That's an issue. Originally, it came with, in which I, I have a video on this, and I'll, I'll post it up here. So this, this rail section here that the optics is actually sitting on um, comes off of the, the carry handle where you can just run just regular carry handle. Now, the carry handle itself is actually pretty good. I like it. It's got the, all the adjustments I need to do. It's got the quick release tabs here. You just screw them off right fast, pull the whole carry handle off. Super simple, right? The problem is the screw that comes out of the top rail and into the carry handle um, would not stay tight because it was in there at an angle. I tried tightening it down and eventually just pulled the screw completely through the rail and the carry handle. What I did instead, just for shits and giggles, just because I was mad and didn't want it to win, I used silicone to silicone the rail on here and then put zip ties on there if the silicone ever let go and the optic went to fall off the zip ties would catch it horrible 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 don't do it because i can actually show you right now that it moves quite a lot it will not hold zero but it looks cool so i decided after i did that and i was like you know what i'm not going to spend another 40 dollars by the way 40 dollars for a new rail i'm, I'm not going to buy a new rail because i am wanting to do a mod zero so I, I just did not want to buy a new rail or, or carry handle right so i would highly recommend not buying one of the monstrum carry handles um however the vortex optic here with the it's flip up covers right it's actually a really good optic now price point on all this the optic i think i paid 175 for it. carry handle was 40 the upper was 250 i want to say I so. yeah um muzzle device was like 16 dollars. this light was 150 um the qd uh attachment right here how much was that that's like 40 bucks it was pretty expensive Right, I forget who makes it. Uh, SB Tactical Brace, uh, I paid 150 for it, but I bought it with a bunch of other stuff to come with it for my TAC-14. 
But uh, I think you can pick these up for somewhere around like 50 bucks, I wanna say, not, not a lot. And then my PSA lower that I have is $150. So you can get this whole build for about 850 bucks. Rough, roughly 850 bucks, which I did buy that lower before the Koof, so I'm sure they've went up in price. However, you could build this right here for under $1,000 if you really wanted to. But then again, you get what you pay for. I would highly recommend not getting the carry handle, not this one, get an actual like good carry handle. I didn't know anything about carry handles. This is the first one I ever bought, paid 40 bucks for it because the others were like $12 and some change. And so I was like, no, that's that's horrible, that's garbage. So I found this one, it was 40 bucks, it looked good. I was like, all right, cool, I'll bet. So I got it and uh, how long did it take before it broke? Uh, I'd say about, about a week. Yeah, about a week before it actually broke which is not good at all. It wasn't on there long at all. No. When it comes to the actual upper itself, um, all it comes with is a flat top, upper receiver, no uh, BCG or charging handle, and it comes with this fat handguard, um, fixed front iron, and this an A2 flash hider. That's 250 bucks, which is essentially the most expensive part. The second most expensive would be a complete lower. That is if you wanted to do complete lower. PSA, uh, like I said, I paid 150 for mine. I don't rightfully remember what they are now, I think they're around 200, 250, somewhere in there. Of course, it's not clone correct, as you can tell. Uh, however, if you wanted to be a little bit closer, you could get the actual CAR-15 flash hider and make it look a lot better. You could sand down on your grip here and sand down this little nub right here and make it look you know, better. You could SBR your, your lower and put a, one of the Brownells retro stocks on here and it'd look really nice. It'd look be a CAR-15. But I mean, it's still a CAR-15 regardless, right? Now, one thing I do like about uh, the carry handle and the optic setup, right, is that you can still coat or you can still look through your iron sights here and see through your iron sights and then come up and run the uh, optic. So one of the main advantages I've noticed with the CAR-15 is the uh, optic height. And uh, if I can get some air pro right fast, I'll show you. One of the main advantages of running a uh, higher optic like this is with my helmet or with any air pro like this and you know, in general, uh, whenever I'm aiming, if I have to get down on the iron sights, I got to get down here. And as you can see, it moved my ear pro. However, fix that right here. I'm seeing through the optic and it's not interrupting the seal on my ear pro. Now, another thing I want to uh, ask you to avoid is the steel 20 round mags. Uh, it does not say the brand on here, which I don't blame them for not wanting to put their brand name or logo or anything on this mag because it jams horribly. I think this is the first magazine that actually pissed me off to the point I just spiked it into the ground mad at it, right? Now, all the steel mags I have, P mags, all that runs great. I highly recommend P mag. Magpool makes amazing product. OK Industries also makes a steel mag that is the same price and quality of a uh, P mag. So I highly recommend them as well. One thing you're going to have to get, right? Because when you order the Strike Fire by Vortex, you get this uh, optic mount, right? So what I had to do, and I think I have them in here. Nope, I don't. I do not. I had to go and find some one inch rings, some one inch rings like this and buy them. It's like 20 bucks for a set of two and it mounts directly down like that and looks good. So if you're wanting to find a uh, Aimpoint Scout, right? They're like 450, 450 bucks for that. This here was 175 and it looks damn near identical. So that's why I want this. It's a red dot just like the Aimpoint. Now it's probably not as durable or as, as good as quality, but it works fantastically for what I'm using it for. And don't use these steel mags. You always use your 30 round steel mags because they do not have feeding issues. Except for that one. Except for this one. This is the only one we found. Um, so yeah, the optic comes with this rail, which is super durable. I'm actually fixing to put this optic on this rail and throw it on a different upper that I have. It's got a bunch of plastic, a bunch of foam in here. Foam insert. There's a ladybug in there. And it, of course, comes with your paperwork, teaching you how to turn it on and everything. Comes with a cleaning cloth, which I do not use. Teaches you how to turn it on, how to change batteries, how to side it in, all that good stuff. You already know. Now the Enforce light on here, um, it's again not clone correct, but I mean I had this thing laying around. It's the one I run on my helmet all the time, and 
it would mount there and it doesn't look ridiculous and it's, it's harder to push the buttons than like a TLR1 would. Highly recommend TLR1s though. If you're looking for a really good quality light, I would not go with the Enforce, I'd go with the TLR1. And then you can change out the backside, get a pressure switch for it. You can use Ranger Bands or zip ties or some elastic to hold it on and you're good. Don't JB weld it. So I've got this elastic band right here with this little piece sticking out right here so I can grab it. That right there is for whenever I connect my sling mount to here and back here, I can fold it up and stow it right here and this little band holds it down. I'm running the TRX arm sling on every one of my rifles. Love that sling, highly recommend the TRX arm sling. So yeah, if you don't wanna run a light or a sling or anything on here, you can just take both of these off it, and this thing's super streamlined, super lightweight, super short. I'm running a 10.5 on here. Now, however, I would love to get a suppressor for this, slap a can on here and make this thing suppressed. Hell, full auto, SBR. So I just had to change out cameras because my storage on this one was full. And so I just took out my knife to take the, the carry handle off to show you guys and broke the tip off of my knife. It's laying right here. So as I was saying, this carry handle is actually very stout, uh, the carry handle itself. So, yep, like I said, siliconed on. Um, but the carry handle itself is actually pretty stout. Where's that 20 rounder? I've chunked it. Never mind. It's laying somewhere out there. Um, you can run it just like this, and it doesn't look bad at all. It's actually really lightweight. I actually prefer this over the other. So this part of the carry handle is actually good. This uh, rail part is not. Do not get this. Uh, optic, very nice. I highly recommend it. It does not come with bolt carrier group or charging handle, it just comes with just this right here with of with these fat hand guards on here and of course the A2 flash hider, not this uh, beautiful three prong that I have on here. So if you want a car 15, I highly recommend it because I loved this setup until it just got to the point of no return and with, it's mainly the uh, rail right here, as you can see, it's cocked. Um, go with a different carry handle do not buy those 20 round steel mags i don't know what brand it is or else i would tell you just try to stay away from them go with your 30 round steel mags uh, okay industries they make phenomenal steel mags uh, highly recommend that highly recommend the vortex it's like a fraction of the cost of the original scout if if you're not too heavy on clone correct right go with this it's phenomenal you'll be impressed with it you'll like it other than that, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I really do appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Go ahead and like, leave a like. Be sure to subscribe because a lot of you watching are not subscribed. Do me a favor, subscribe to me. It helps with me. You know, it helps me build the channel, helps me reach to more people. Leave a comment because it helps with the algorithm. So what else, Eric? Nothing? I got nothing either. Appreciate every one of you watching. I'll see you next time. Damn it, broke my fucking knife. Jack.